What would you like to know first? I put a little question um, poll up on my Instagram like a few mm. days ago. I was like, I have a financial expert in. What would you like to know? And some people actually wondered how, for example, when they start their career at 21, 23, what's the best way for them to prepare and to start preparing to buy a home? So obviously the best thing to do is save. But in order to save, you need to learn how to budget effectively. So that can be, a, the general rule is 50, 30, 20. So if you've moved out of your family home, 50% of your salary can go on rent and bills, etc. 30% of it can go on needs, gym, food, all that sort of stuff. And then 20% of it should go into savings and wants. And that is basically how you budget your corporate salary. So it doesn't have to be exactly that. And you need to make sure that your budgeting is completely realistic. I've reviewed people's budgets before and they have gone, my budget isn't working. And I go, okay, let me take a look at it. And it's because they're budgeting £50 a month to go out with friends and go for dinners and stuff. And that for them isn't enough money. So you need to look at your budget and make sure it's realistic. And then from that 20%, you can start saving. So you can either use something called a high interest savings account where you put your money and it has a slightly higher interest than a normal bank. Okay. Or you can put it in an ISA because when you take money out of an ISA, there's no tax on it. So there's no income tax, capital gains tax or dividends tax. Is ISA that one that you, it's free a period, right? It's no. So it's an individual savings account and you can open it at any time when you're over 18 or you can open a junior ISA. And you can add twenty up to £20,000 per tax year into the ISA. There's a stocks and shares ISA, a finance innovation ISA. Is there a housing one? LISA. Lifetime ISA. Oh, okay. <laughs> Look at these names. I know, I know. Um, I mean, it, it makes sense. It's catchy. And I, um, do people just download apps? So you can download apps or you can use different platforms. So for me personally, I have a stocks and shares ISA and I use a platform called Vanguard which I love and find very Vanguard helpful. is one of the biggest trading companies in the world, right? Isn't yeah. Vanguard like... So how did Vanguard get into this? I don't know their personal story. It's, uh, it's crazy, right? Because they're gaining something from this. So Vanguard have delved into this world of saving and helping people prepare and all that type of stuff. That's interesting. But then the, the general ISO one, is that a government-based one? So there's a cash ISO. So you can open that with lots of different banks as well. Okay. Sorry, I'm not as educated in this. So I, I, maybe I'm asking questions that aren't that, I don't know, smart. No, no, no. Because for me, the only reason I know these things is because I've worked in finance for so long. But the average person doesn't even have like basic financial literacy. Yeah. So you're asking the questions that everyone listening to this also doesn't know the answer to. Yeah. You have it, guys. Grace just said none of you know anything about finance. <laughs> well, it's probably true, though. It's probably true. That's why we've tuned in for the advice. So we've all been young and we all like to splash our own money when we shouldn't do. What are the mistakes that you see most often? So for me, I've also done this. I love a handbag. Okay, so I love a designer what handbag. Type? Any. Any. I just like a pretty handbag. So I will happily go to Paris and spend a ridiculous amount of money on a nice handbag, which is something I shouldn't do because it's very irresponsible. So I now have the rule of a 24-hour ban on myself. Usually I'll see, like, it will come up on my Instagram ads, like a new handbag, and I'm like, oh my god, a new handbag, I really need it. So I put a 24-hour ban on buying anything that is above a certain amount, so that usually by the end of the 28 hours, 24 hours even, my serotonin levels have plummeted, so now I don't want that item as much as I did in the first place, which is a very clever hack. I've um, seen people use that hack for many things, actually. And I think it's, yeah, it's a smart way of doing it. But for someone listening to this saying, no, nah, I want that handbag. Grace, convince me more. What's the alternative? Where can that money go instead? That money can go in savings. It can go into your future. It can go into getting a mortgage, a deposit. Or just like more handbags. Or more handbags <laughs> if you find a cheaper option. Um, but it's important that you decide what you want what does your next five years look like for you and it will be completely different for everyone so when I was in corporate my next five years looked like 
buying a house so I saved up money for a deposit now it doesn't particularly look like that because I'm self-employed and I want to go traveling so it can change and so you can change for that as well so if if it looks like getting a house deposit then put your money in a high interest savings account or an ISA so it can compound and grow rather than leaving it in a bank account so I guess metaphorically put it's like a recipe if you know what you want to make then you can prepare the ingredients for it yeah now a lot of people though don't know what they want to make when they get in the kitchen very true so is there still something they should do should they live carefree i think that's up to everyone's individual circumstances if you just want to live carelessly and not have any savings or an emergency fund or anything be my guest if that's what makes you happy then go do it it's not my place to tell people what to do but if you do want to have an emergency fund so like for example today a rock hit my windscreen and now I need to get my windscreen replaced I have an emergency fund so yes it's irritating that I'm gonna have to spend that money but at the same time I've got it and so for me that gives me a sense of security so I don't need to worry about those things too much whereas if you are living carefree and something does happen then do you have the money for it or not no, that's a very good point. And life is constantly full of like little surprises. I mean, I had one late last night, you had one today. So yeah, but the key is we're both still here grinding. Exactly. And so for me personally, what makes me happy is that I'm financially stable. That's what makes me happy. If I'm not, I stress a lot and I have ever since I was tiny. So at 16, I went and I got my first job so I could have my own money and pay for like my fuel for my car and my insurance and my MOT and things like that and so having financial stability is very important to me. What was your first car? My first car, Ford Fiesta. Nice. Okay, question. Now, we talked about mortgages. Staying on cars actually, young people love cars Mm -hmm. and your first car was a Ford Fiesta which is a budget option obviously for a 16 year old. What would your advice be to the extravagant young teenager or early 20s young adult that feels the need to lease out or finance out a nice German whip? (laughs) I think for me it's more difficult because I'm not a big car fanatic. But you understand financially it's much more expensive. Yeah, yeah. So for example, if you have a lot of monthly payments, when you're trying to get a mortgage and and things like that, people will ask what monthly payments you have. And it's a liability in the sense that you owe money to someone. So I've always bought my cars outright because then it's mine and I don't owe money to anyone. And so that, again, is really important because when you're doing a mortgage, they'll look at all your incomings and outgoings and they will see that car as well. Also, that car isn't yours. So if you scratch it or you crash it, then you're kind of stuffed. Yeah, yeah, I suppose so. But also when you own the car, it is a depreciating asset, but it's an asset nonetheless. So if Grace wanted to pay towards another car or anything else, Grace could sell the Ford Fiesta. Exactly. But even if you get a leased car, you're still depreciating it, but you're still paying it off at full value. Also, the interest is ridiculous on these things, right? It's a joke. Do you know the numbers, the figures? No, it's different for everyone depending on your situation. Mortgage interests are bad, aren't they? Yeah. They're horrible. All interest is terrible, but that's why you have a savings account, high interest savings account, because that's where the interest can be good. Do these saving ac- accounts match inflation? Not necessarily. Okay. So you can go on websites like Money Saver Expert, and they will give you like the top 10 high interest savings accounts. And sometimes they're quite good. They're at like 6 or 7%, which is great. So we've just had our appetizers. Now we're going in for the main meal which is all about talking about how to start your own business. And we touched on that at the beginning, but detail it. Your steps, your vision for yourself, past the three-month period. Yeah, take it away. I think my journey into business was a little bit different than everyone else's. 